In this section, we'll be talking about secondary headaches. This is headaches where we can find a cause. Now, primary headache syndrome, such as migraine headache, tension, and cluster headaches, much more common than secondary headaches. So much so that when a family comes in having a child with complaints of headaches, I'll often assume it's a primary headache syndrome, but I'll be fishing for signs and symptoms and other clues that there might be more to the story suggestive of a secondary headache. Infection can be a cause for secondary headaches in the form of something like encephalitis or meningitis. It's usually a pretty easy diagnosis to make, or at least to differentiate from a primary headache syndrome, is that there's often other symptoms that go along with this form of headaches, as there are for other secondary sorts of headaches. Something like a stiff neck, fever, altered mental status, that's a change in how awake they are, how alert they are. Having some sort of sick contact, being exposed to someone known to have meningitis, might lead me more towards thinking about infection. It'll often prompt a, a trip to the emergency department, maybe with some special tests being ordered, such as a lumbar puncture to look at spinal fluid. Head trauma is a pretty easy one in that there's often a history. Importantly, the head trauma for recurrent or chronic headaches has to be pretty significant. We'll often grade concussions on a scale of one to three, depending on the severity with things like loss of consciousness, the person pass out from their uh, head trauma, um, what kind of amnesia or other symptoms do they have after the head trauma, and it's the more severe sort of concussions that cause persistent recurrent headaches. There can be other sorts of intracranial processes, things being wrong with the brain. It could be things like vascular malformations, other sort of blood vessel problems within the brain, or even something like a tumor or, or brain malformation can cause chronic headaches. An important thing here is that headaches are a little bit like fever, in that they're really more of a symptom than a diagnosis in itself. So it often leads us looking for a cause, and once we rule out all the serious stuff, then we're left with primary headache syndromes. Some of the things we might look for in trying to decide is this a primary headache syndrome or a secondary, more worrisome sort of headache, is if there's any sleep-related problems. So one thing I'll always ask families about is, do the headaches wake the child from sleep, especially at the same time every night or early morning, I should say, and that uh, the children will go to bed feeling fine, no headache, two or three o'clock in the morning will wake up with headache, especially if there's any vomiting involved uh, with the headache that awakens them from sleep. That's something worrisome. A severe abrupt onset headache. So a very first headache can be confusing for, for neurologists. The most likely thing is that it's just a first ever migraine. But for a first ever headache, without having recurrent headaches over and over, it may make us think of something else more serious. Having any sort of confusion or changes in mental status, that means when a patient comes in and, and, and they've had a headache for two days, now they're very sleepy, uh, and then maybe even that's evolved into some other symptoms besides just sleep sleepiness, that the headaches have some sort of progressive nature to them. So the story I might get that would be very worrisome is a family comes in and they say, my child started with a kind of nonspecific headache two weeks ago. Uh, it was located in the right uh, uh, front part of, part of their, their, their head. By two days later, their whole head was hurting. It got to the point where they could hardly even sleep. It was waking them up, up at night. Now the headache's constant, child's sleepy, and their left arm is numb. Something like that would make me very suspicious of secondary headaches, this sudden onset headache, progressively worsening with neurological symptoms. Something else that occasionally comes up with families is I'll have a family come in and maybe get a very typical story from a migraine headache or tension headaches and start them on a course of treatment, but the, not, the response to the medication isn't what I would expect. Nothing's working like it should be working. That might make me think there might be something more going on and might uh, cause me to do something like an MRI or some other sort of diagnostic testing. So primary headache syndromes, migraine, tension, cluster, and some others, much more common than secondary headaches. The worrisome secondary headache signs, things like wakening a child from sleep, associated neurological symptoms, and then any sort of abnormalities on examination. A less worrisome sort of secondary headache are sinus-related headaches. What often happens in my office is families have suspected sinus-related headaches, they've seen their pediatrician, maybe even gone to an allergist or ear, nose, throat doctor, have had extensive testing or even treatment directed towards sinus headaches, and no risk, no response. 
Many primary headache syndromes, such as tension headache or migraine headaches, can mimic or look like sinus-related headaches, having a frontal sort of predominance, the pain being more in front, a sort of pressure feeling or throbbing feeling, might, much like parents would think of a sinus-related headache. For these sort of headaches and differentiating between the two, we'll often look at other sorts of symptoms. For example, if we get these episodic headaches that maybe last somewhere between two and six hours, have associated nausea, and then are gone, or relief with a quiet dark room, it might make me think a little more towards a primary headache syndrome rather than being sinus related. It's nice if families have had some diagnostic testing done, either a sinus x-ray or possibly even a CT scan and not have any fluid or signs of inflammation in their sinuses. But overall, sinuses are usually unrelated to headaches and I find that it'll often delay the treatment uh, and diagnosis and other sorts of primary headache syndrome such as migraine.